Yeah, so what we're going to discuss on, uh, on the next panel is, is what does it cost you to be an app, app store millionaire? Um, recent Fixu, one of the app marketing agency data, showed that it, it costs you around $200,000 to get you into the top 25 on, on the app store. And, and, and knowing that there is there's thousands of apps put there over there daily, so you really need to kind of be creative with your marketing and, and, and look different ways. How do, you, how do you reach for the people and how do you acquire them? Um, so this is what we're going to discuss today. Um, because there is still room outside of that top, top 25, there is a recent study from Poland, um, the Millionaire Index, where we really looked into the, into the kind of group of, of how much there is actually people who are earning a million dollars from the App Store. And it, it, was, it was around 2,000 developers, so it's a, it's a big number still. But anyway, um, let's kick off, and I, I think I'll join over here. <clears throat> And, and if you just quickly just introduce who you are, um, uh, the company where you are and what you do. Yes. Uh, I'm Ville Heyeri. I work as a general manager at Two Men and a Dog. Uh, we developed and published a game called Zombie Catchers uh, out on iOS for, for about a year now and, uh, and soon to be launched on Android. Uh, hi, my name is Anne Vu and I am the UA lead at Rovio Entertainment. So I. Uh, manage a small team doing UA completely in-house for our portfolio of like casual, casual plus Angry Birds games. Uh, but um, lately we're focusing also on new IPs and new game genres. So uh, in the coming year you'll probably see um, our usual sort of casual games, but then you'll see games are mid-core, uh, deep strategy, etc. And uh, in the past seven years I've been working at various uh, gaming companies doing UA and marketing. Um, and uh, in, in the US, and now I'm actually based in Finland, so it's nice to be here. Hey, my name is Mika Kuusisto, and I feel like half of the Finland is up here. <laughs> you know, you're not Finnish, but you're <laughs> living there, you're half Finnish. <laughs> and he's from Sweden, right? So it's like half Finland. Um, <laughs> so one version. One version, yes, a Finnish version. Um, so I'm the uh, chief revenue officer at Outfit 7. Um, we have about 3.2 billion downloads and counting, 250 million monthly actives. Um, so my team, well, I'm looking after like well, revenues. So you know, user acquisition, retention, extremely important. Uh, ad revenues, uh, also all sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, looking forward to this panel. All right. So I'm the odd man out here. Um, uh, so I'm uh, the CEO of a company called Cloudcade. Uh, we founded Cloudcade in summer of 2014, and in September 2015, we launched our first game called Shop Heroes. Uh, so we're about uh, about a couple of months in development of that game, and realized that we might have a chance uh, at actually doing pretty well with it. So uh, we're today sitting in a in a spot where we're looking at how far we can grow it and what what we can do uh, do next with with this game. And thanks, guys, for inviting me on the panel. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, let's kick off. Um, I think first let's go for the uh, little bit on uh, on the budgeting side. On so, what you would say? How much do you usually? On what percentage of your of your marketing budget do you basically allocate into the paid advertising versus the the creative ad advertising or whatever cross marketing? What do you do? So, how much do you usually use for the paid advertising or paid acquisition? <laughs> you go. Yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, yeah, so at Rovio, like we have a really, really strong brand, um, you know, and, and we have, you know, a marketing budget for when we have new games and to support existing games. And what we're trying to do now is kind of push um, our entire marketing budget towards sort of paid performance um, or, you know, directly or, or indirectly. So indirectly is, you know, if we're going to make it like a really awesome like teaser video or some sort of like really cool event, we try to, to tie it, time it or then use the assets in our paid advertising using the video in UA networks or, or timing it so that it launch, it coincides with, you know, a big 
um, marketing push that we're doing um, just to kind of like really maximize the conversion and the and the visibility of, of our efforts. So so a lot uh, of the marketing goes into uh, paid performance. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> at Outfit Seven, uh, yeah, obviously also a very strong brand or IP. Um, short answer is actually very little. So I think we're running after you guys. So <laughs> now, um, but it's really we've been. There's a couple of reasons. Though, um, we actually spent quite heavily of our effort on on different cross promotion mechanics mechanisms. So also reason for that is that you know we've been launching a lot of apps in the in the very same genre. So you have uh, you have your audience, which you try to then convert to other stuff. Um, we spend enormous effort on 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 working on retention, just making sure we 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 get those users, you know, be active with our games. So, um, paid UA we've done, you know, a little bit every now and then. You know, sometimes we support new launch a bit, but currently we do more or less testing different networks, different testing different, you know, uh, let's say finding out the quality, and. Um, and obviously, when we are comfortable with, 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 let's say that you know we can we can get the quality out from certain network that we get gonna get, let's say, return on investment, then of course we can you know uh, invest a bit more. Um, however, we're probably gonna end up doing a little bit more by QA due to the also working towards other genres, if you will. Um, but still, you know, uh, let's say the effort we spend on daily basis in, in my team is, is really looking into making making sure first of all we get you know, users coming back, we get, you know, retain, retain them, we get the retention, you know, working on re-engagement models, etc. cetera. Um, um, I'm kind of looking into also, or we're thinking of different um, social influences, if you will, in terms of paid UA. Um, haven't done much, but that's that's kind of interesting area also to, to look into, the, perhaps in the future. I, I can guess I can give the, the small, small developers perspective on this, so, um, we, we've done very, very little paid UA to date, and we've got about 600,000 downloads. Very few of those are paid. Uh, what we found uh, when trying to learn, a, learn this, I always say we're really good at making games, and we're maybe not that great at publishing because it comes with all these, all these other things that you need to understand. And when we <coughs> launched Shop Heroes, uh, starting to spend money on paid UA was, was extremely confusing and, and also it got expensive really fast. As soon as I'd find a good little pocket of players, somebody else found that pocket and started outbidding me. So uh, we kind of, yeah, I know, <laughs> I, I wasn't pointing any fingers. So we, so we kind of, we, we, we're still entertaining it and we still find good users, but it's more of a sniper approach than, uh, than going broad. It takes a lot of time, a lot of resources. Um, and uh, we've started to look uh, look more into how we can leverage the, the existing community and how we can sort of target them. Uh, so one of the things that we're uh, doing right now is, uh, is sort of targeted Twitter buy. Uh, there's some technologies out there that are able, available to create profiles on, on Twitter users, remove all the bots. I didn't even know there were bots on Twitter before we, before we did this. I don't understand why. but. Uh, so so uh, we're, we're trying to take a, a little more of a guerrilla approach, but at the same time, at a certain point, to get your game to take off, you need to hit scale. Uh, and that's probably where uh, we as a small developer are not sure yet uh, where we're going to go. Yeah, and just a quick comment. So we don't really have like any kind of budget examples, but, but Zombie Cat shows is one of these cases of how not to develop a game. So, so make the best game you can and keep your fingers crossed for Apple, pro Apple promotion. But, but basically, <laughs> I'm featuring, but, but basically we've done like a whole bunch of different tests where we mainly, mainly try to, trying to figure out like where do we get the best LTV out of, out of users using like the, the basic stack of, of, uh, of analytics and, and tracking and so forth. So uh, for us, it's been really interesting. The game has been out for so long on iOS to see like how the word of mouth carries over to Android. So, so how we view it from our customer support contacts and so on is that there's a lot of sort of pent up demand for, for our Android launch now. Okay. So then it's, it's interesting to start spending on Android and at the same time on our iOS and see like how much that sort of carries over to the other platform. Yeah. Yes, yes. So then, a little bit on the, on, the, on the channels. So when you when you go and when you do uh, marketing, so <clears throat> would, is there anything you would like to kind of say, which marketing channels would you kind of prioritize if you within your budget? So where would you use them? And, and, and so so uh, 
We, we've done, uh, obviously, Facebook. I think uh, everybody's going to nod. And uh, the next thing that we're working on is, uh, is I call them mid-level YouTubers. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube, but YouTube happens to be the big, big guy. Uh, and rather than trying to go after, uh, the, let's say, the, the top, top players in the space, we've sort of found a nice little sweet spot between 500,000 and, and 2 million followers and try to create a, like a CPI model or, or uh, uh, even in some cases we're, we're discussing the idea of like customized content in the game and stuff like that. So we can actually go pretty deep in an integration like that. But we thought like, that's going to be a, a great spot for mobile games going forward. Um, so channel strategy, it's kind of based on budget. So when I was working um, way back when for like the smaller indies and we had a really small budget, uh, I concentrated all of our spend towards like Facebook. Like everything went towards Facebook. It was awesome. This was like in 2010, 2011 when like CPIs were under a dollar on Facebook. And uh, I think every developer is just like should have just put all of our money on there. Um, but as, as you kind of go into like the millions of dollars uh, a budget, of course you have to diversify your, your strategy and, and go uh, everywhere uh, and then just kind of seeing what works for you. But um, in my experience, like uh, right now video is really, really big. So most of our budget is going towards um, all the video channels. Um, we've tried sort of like the social influencers, so like the YouTube search, uh, like alternative strategies and uh, at the end of the day it's just about managing your resources and if you kind of have like a small team and you're doing everything in-house uh, you know managing all the work to kind of get a few hundred downloads from youtubers or getting a few hundred downloads from like sort of search ASO um, it's it's really not uh, not worth it so we just kind of focus then um, the ability to kind of spend more money in in channels that are able to scale get us thousands or millions of users uh, in in a month or a year uh, so so for us that's um, the display networks and 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 video um, I mean not that much budget spent to UAS as, as you guys but very similar ideas here so I mean, you know Facebook proves to be pretty good source for us, you know, because of the genre, because of, I don't know, demographics. Um, so that's something we're going to, I don't know, more or less continuously, you know, uh, spend a little bit. Uh, video, uh, um, I think it's even going to get stronger this year. Um, so that's definitely something I would also, you know, put more money. Um, but again, this social influence, and again, we haven't really done much. So that's something I'd be kind of interested in, 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 in looking into. I know there's I don't know, tracking challenges and whatnot, but this is something as, as, as I would kind of, depending a little bit on the, on the game, of course, you know, what kind of what game you build. But uh, I guess currently what we have is, is some of the older apps, which is super big. I'm not sure how well they would fit, but you know, this is something we, we, we obviously need to also find out. Uh, I just have something to add. Um, well, I guess like since you're here and you're just kind of looking for insights, um, mostly like indies here, I would probably, just, uh, I guess, if you kind of have a smaller budget, I would just kind of push it towards Facebook, definitely, and then the video networks. Uh, we Facebook is, is really confusing, but I think that's really where you're going to get a lot of learnings, and I think yeah. you should invest some time to, to learn how it works and then to kind of uh, invest the technology to kind of implement the SDK and, and then get like as much downstream data as you can. And then um, that's where you can kind of take the learnings you get, like you say, okay, uh, what I found is like my demographic are mostly, you know, males this certain age, 30 to 45. I thought it was going to be 18 to 30. Uh, I was wrong. So then you kind of take that information and then you can kind of go broad into like the video networks or display networks or even going to the social influence network. So if you know that your demographic is coming from uh, males 35 plus, then you can kind of target a different sort of strategy or negotiation with, with uh, the, the YouTubers uh, instead of going for the wrong demographic. So uh, definitely uh, advocate uh, Facebook for learning. Yeah, and I guess you mentioned a keyword here, the data. And, and, and this is super important for, you know, all the big guys, all the indies, because you you need to be, I don't know, you need to spend some time and effort on understanding the data, you know, uh, what does it mean? And, and this is often something, I mean, um, uh, you know, I, I used to be at the, at the video network before and, you know, spend a lot of time with small indies, helping them to perhaps understand how to monetize 
uh, uh, with video, but uh, you know, obviously you have uh, two men and a dog, you know. Uh, you know that's the name of the company, by the way. So, <laughs> but, like, you know, Wille obviously, you know, <coughs> understands this. But there's a lot of guys who, you know, of course you want to create a ga great game and you're kind of an artist and, and, and a developer, etc. But you just need to get comfortable with data. Because if you can't, you know, then it's just, you know, just impossible to really figure out what's your target audience, you know, how you're going to convert, what we're going to target. And then, you know, it's just a waste of money to put any money on UA. Yeah, I just wanted to add like a like a quick consideration on which channels to use is also like which channels are you earning in. So basically, like like Zombie Catchers, for example, is a game that that monetizes pretty heavily on video ads. So so uh, anything from between forty to sixty percent of the revenue any any given month, depending a bit on the region and and uh, what's happening in the game is is coming from video ads. So then it becomes also a consideration of which networks are you using to 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 monetize. Because then potentially you're able to also negotiate with the networks on on uh, actually getting like some kind of bone structure or some kind of other incentives to feed that revenue back into into advertising and acquiring more users from the network. So that's just one one thing to keep in mind. And uh, just to give you guys some some context on on our uh, sort of early YouTube experiments, uh, we're doing about three. Uh, three dollars between three and four dollars for a for a CPV, so click per view, uh, and the conversion rate is about six percent, uh, and that's after three uh, uh, three gameplay sessions. So it's pretty cool. We're able to actually pay them decent money if they convert, and and like I said, if you can play around with that model a lot, but but that's where we've drawn the line, and so far it's been been pretty interesting for us. Okay, thanks. Then I think next is is because um, there is there is now different kind of sizes of companies and, and all that. So how much do you still consider and, and, and how important do you feel is that that um, when you are launching that you get featured by the Apple or Google? Is that something that you actively still search or or is it something that you feel that okay it comes if it comes or? It's uh, huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's uh, they're market makers. They're the ones determining uh, what's going to happen next. So, uh, without a feature, uh, it's really, really tough. What, what we learned is you got to be patient. And you got to you got to help yourself in that space uh, a lot too. There's a lot of things you can do, but uh, it's definitely it's it's uh, it's almost a must in, uh, in in my opinion. At least a, a decent feature to, to launch the game. Then it could take some time to be refeatured and. Uh, if I look at our own example, we're, we're living in the App Store right now, which is great. So every week something is happening. It's not nothing major, but something is happening, and, and that's extremely important for, for a small company. Yeah, and, and for, for like a game like ours, like Zombie Catchers, it was basically built for that in mind, that you create like sort of weird content that sticks out and you polish it to, to this degree that it's it's sort of easy to feature. That was that was definitely one of the one of the factors. And to be honest, this is a game which has like a relatively lenient monetization. And it's especially being designed with the video ads with non paying non paying uh, players in mind. And uh, and getting featured was just just crucial for this game. So so obviously it's it's uh, when you have a small team it's it's definitely a big factor. And uh, featuring also from our side, I mean, it's still super important. You know, we have to scale to to, to kind of, I don't know, cross promote the hell out of a new app and and get it really high. But it's it's still you know it's really super important. So the challenge is that it kind of comes. Um, you kind of have an idea that every everything you launch will be features because featured because we were featured so many times. But it's not that easy. You know, you still need to kind of. You know, build something really cool. You need to work with your relationship, etc., and still get a bit of a luck as well. But uh, featuring still is on, on 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 both of those platforms. Super, super, super important for us. Yeah. For my note for this question, it just it just says featuring is very important, and and it is. Um, I think the problem uh, is that like there are like thousands of games being published on. Apple and Google every day, and the visibility is a challenge for everyone. Like, you make a great game, but like, how are people going to find it? And uh, really, the first step is is the featuring. And um, and uh, Rovio's really lucky is that we have a great relationship with with bo both platforms, and they are able to kind of give us the featuring. But um, on a practical note, like you know, I, I work with our key account director, and and his his his. Um, 
advice is that you know Apple wants to feature you because you know you create an app or a game that that highlights their 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 platform that highlights like you know um, all the features and 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 just kind of the ease of use and and the colors and it looks great um, and on, on Google you know Google is interested in uh, getting new players into their platform so if you're able to kind of release a game that's really fun that's going to attract people to like play on Google, um, uh, that's, that's really kind of be uh, maybe a way to do that. So um, uh, very, very important and um, absolutely crucial to, to an app success. And unfortunately, it's just uh, not available to everyone. And not, it's not even guaranteed for us. I think we, we have to work uh, for it as hard as anybody. Excellent. <clears throat> so when, okay, when you get the featuring, is there any kind of tactics or strategies, what do you do immediately if you get it? I mean, do you go full frontal also on, on a paid acquisition at the same time with the featuring, or do you basically just enjoy the featuring and, hey, now it goes, yeah, it's, it's there? Uh, or anything that you could basically emphasize on, okay, how do you basically, are there anything what you can gain traction more from the featuring? Well, even, even for a small studio, we had really limited uh, amounts of cash at our disposal when launching launching the game originally in, in October 2014 and but we when we got featured we did decide to put like some some backing behind it and did like some some push campaigns uh, where then it's arguable like how much of a sustained effect we got like on the on the charting but uh, but I, I think that that was still like a reasonable thing to try out okay, yeah. um, mm, so uh, for featuring, when we, when we do uh, a game launch, I guess um, what I do is I have uh, a plan A and a plan B. So we launch and we get featuring, or we launch and we don't get featuring, and then um, sort of like the budget. So we have two budgets, like two sort of uh, execution plans kind of based on the featuring. So you usually find out you know, if you're going to be featured on Thursday, so then you find out, oh, we didn't get the feature, like, let's just kind of, like, steer it towards where we then uh, use a lot of money to kind of boost that the app up and to get visibility and to kind of really have a great launch. Uh, if we get the featuring, then we just, like, okay, great, like, let's just kind of keep it at, uh, at a level where the featuring kind of boosts our conversion and it really helps uh, our paid efforts, uh, and but then we can kind of um, use that extra money that uh, that the visibility afforded and just kind of carry it out to then sustain the ranking uh, for a bit longer uh, to kind of maximize uh, the value of a valuable featuring. Yeah, I guess I could, I could kind of draw this back to the, uh, the cross-promotion, if you will. I mean, yeah, sometimes we support the launch a bit with, with paid QA, sometimes a little bit less. Some of the recent launches, we really didn't do much on a paid QA, but it really kind of determines, the, the, the feature really determines our uh, cross-promo strategy, like which apps to promote on which other apps and which units, which placement. Shall we use a, uh, a, 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 a slot in, a ga in another game for uh, cross-promoting a game that re will be featured, or shall we even give that slot to a third-party uh, uh, video network, for example, to monetize? So we kind of try to consider Oh, I actually try to try to really spend enough effort also for understanding the, the cross promo as a, as a way of I don't know user acquisition you know similar data similar kind of uh, you know uh, you know LTV LTV uh, driven model that what should we promote where and the featuring gives us really one one tool one tool more to to kind of really you know uh, uh, design on the on what which slots where which order what to backfill, all these things, which I think, you know, uh, later on when we go more paid QA, it's kind of a lot of similarities there. And I think I'm going to steal one from you that you one mentioned earlier about confidence on data. Again, going back to data. So once you kind of do things in scale, you kind of understand, okay, this is this is the data I have. I have to trust, you know, my, my analytics, my, my data, and I just go with it. So this is often we, we try to kind of, you know, Consider the, the, the cross promo, you know, in a similar way than UA that we just trust, you know, this is the source. We're going to get new users for this new app. Now, it's, if it's featured, we're going to maybe even push, 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 uh, push a bit more on this market. You know, it, it all depends. So, uh, I guess the, the, the shop story part of this for, for us uh, and then trying to build it into, into a story a bit is we, we weren't ready uh, when, uh, when we got the 
the, the Thursday Thursday uh, call uh, on being featured are, and, and, and we kind of knew that, and uh, despite not having much confidence in the data we had, uh, I knew that our game was not 100% uh, ready for prime time. We talked about things like engagement and retention and stuff like that. We, we knew we could make, be make a better game. So although we could not afford to say no, um, we didn't spend uh, almost any money on paid UA uh, on launch. We were an iOS 9 launch title. And uh, there's obviously, for anybody who's done this for a while, there's obviously some risk involved with being on, on a new OS or a new version of, a, of, of iOS. So we knew, we knew we had issues. So knowing that, we still went ahead and, and we did, uh, did a launch and we're very, very grateful for that. But we did not spend uh, uh, maybe, maybe a couple thousand dollars max. Uh, and uh, to, uh, trying to get a, a refeature with the same pro uh, prominence now is, is super hard. So it was, a, it was a bit of a risk calculation from our side, but, but I think uh, we did the right thing by supporting, continuing to support a good game. Thank you. How we are we with the time, by the way? Uh, <laughs> can we take a few questions from the audience? Or, yeah. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so, how much would you say that you need to spend during soft launch in order to test your assumptions that you made during production, really? I, I can. Uh, it's not how much you need to spend uh, in, in in that sense. It's uh, you, you need uh, you need enough players to be able to to kind of. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> sorry. So so uh, uh, we started building a community much much earlier. We started. Uh, uh, we did things like soft launching on, on Facebook before the game was even remotely ready. Uh, so by the time we were ready to soft launch in, a, in any kind of importance, any territory, we already had uh, about 10,000 players and, and, and about, I think, 2,000 daily actives. So we, we had a good idea what the behavior were, but they, we knew that they were fans. And that was what really bothered us with the data that we got from our sort of first couple of cohorts. And, and by the time... Uh, we were ready to, to sort of soft launch, uh, we saw a pretty dramatic drop in all the KPIs that we had. So uh, that, that was probably one of the biggest lessons for, for us. We need a lot more users a lot earlier. So uh, what, what the price tag for that, that would be? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so there, there's the, like I would say five to $10,000 and that's not just like, okay, I spent $10,000. Um, five to $10,000, thousand dollars is so that you can kind of go out there test um, a lot of different strategies so we're saying put a little bit on Facebook put a little bit in video put a little, uh, little bit in sort of like traditional display networks um, then really kind of target out just say like um, uh, we need to get like enough users here to kind of build a cohort um, also you have to have tracking uh, of course um, but I would say uh, also separate it out by countries um, like the US um, you know, players are going to behave differently from like the French, Canadian. So uh, the the strategy is to kind of maybe get about. I, I really don't know much about sort of like data significance, but like have enough players so you can figure out. Okay, uh, it really only works when we advertise in the U.S. or when we advertise in Asia or when we advertise uh, on video in Asia or video uh, in the U.S. or Facebook in Japan or something like that. Um, uh, just to kind of study your players, how they perform, and if you kind of put it all in one channel, then that's sort of like uh, like uh, gambling, I guess. It's like roulette. Anyone play that? And uh, <laughs> so, so yeah, and 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 it is really tricky. And I think yeah, you can do a lot of it in soft launch. Um, I would say stay against some sort of using Facebook, like a Facebook. Is are you talking about like a Facebook cat? Canvas game, and then uh, well, because like I think um, players behave differently on Facebook on desktop as you do on mobile. So uh, if you get like LTV of like five dollars on Facebook, but then you see that they don't monetize like that on mobile, then you know the, then your your test like your five to ten thousand dollar test is kind of wasted because it's it's not going to help you build out uh, a case for expanding. Any more questions to respond? Yeah. Yep. Yes. 
How large are your marketing teams? How large are your marketing teams? If you can say. For us, it's me. <laughs> large. <laughs> Uh, our team, <laughs> our team is like about eight people, and then I have like just on focusing on UA. I think we have like four, so four to eight, depending on how you count it. So, so we uh, we did we did something uh, I guess a little little different. I have a, com a dedicated community manager. Uh, we have somebody who takes care of, of user acquisition in all its forms, and. Uh, then we decided to outsource anything that needs scale. So uh, customer service, which I also, I count all this as user acquisition because they're super important to retain your players. So, so anything that needed scale or anything that needed uh, language capabilities, we uh, outsourced to a company called Keywords. And, uh, uh, they allow us to operate like a, like a big company whenever we have any, any problems with stuff like that. So it's about uh, three people, but I can scale it to inf not infinite. But. <laughs> Which is great, by the way, for other languages, like uh, non-English non or non-French. Yeah, we also have a handful of people, and, and, and I think what's, what's, what's interesting nowadays, it's like if you want to do really paid UA in scale, like spending trillions of money, you don't really need to scale the team to be having like 20 people. It's rather like, you know, you know a few good guys, and, 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 but also, you know, really kind of finding good UA experts in the market is actually very, very difficult. Um, but you know, you need a handful of good good people to uh, really work on different different channels. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> I guess most mobile indie developers have zero budget rather than a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar budget. So if I was to have your zero budget, what would you do? That's not very short range. Yeah. Say one thing. <laughs> So I guess the the subway system is off. So, yeah. No. Okay. Um, uh, one one uh, one thing. Uh, uh, easily with uh, with uh, with no budget, you're uh, you're you're kind of out of luck. You can make a great game. You can make a fantastic game, and it's just not enough anymore. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say just make a very viral game that requires no marketing. So you've seen it, like Flappy Bird, uh, Cross Your Road. I don't know. Make one of those. We're gonna uh, have a game jam in the bar afterwards, and we'll make <laughs> one. Th that is the secret sauce, right? You know. <laughs> okay. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much for for coming and, and for discussing. <laughs>